Ladies and gentlemen, out here in paradise, I am with David Metzger. And how would you define yourself, David? What is your title? I'm a biologist and a conservation educator. All right, and a falcon expert. I am a falcon ecology expert. Oh. I am not an expert in the sport of falconry, though I am a licensed falconer. Oh, okay, all right. I thought it was unique that out here in Torrey Pines with all these beautiful uh, paragliders out here that you've got this exhibit, if you will, of uh, falconry, and you do a lot of educating out here, right? We do. We do, and this is a fantastic place for both birds and people to fly, so we wanted to bring the bird part of it closer to people. Oh, very cool. Because there's something you do out here, which I've never heard of before. I've heard of paragliding, but you've got... Parahawking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has anybody out there ever gone parahawking? I doubt it's a very rare, but tell us a little bit about parahawking. Parahawking is the sport and art of flying and soaring aircraft with trained soaring birds like these uh, falcons here or hawks or vultures. What a rush. How much fun would that be? My gosh. Soaring right alongside a, a falcon. It's very much like being a bird and it's the best way to live that dream we all had as kids of actually flying with the birds and being a bird ourselves. Oh, I was just talking with uh, Gabriel earlier and I've had that dream and I think a lot of people have where you're you know, dreaming and you're just gliding over neighborhoods and uh, it must be a very common dream. Absolutely, and I think that's why a lot of people do falconry and enjoy uh, educational exhibits of free flying birds is because it really gives them that experience as well. You mentioned that this is a descendant of dinosaurs uh, and uh, this is a raptor. Yes, as far as we can tell, birds are the last remaining uh, dinosaurs on Earth. And uh, they are raptors in the sense that they hunt with their feet and their talons, just as raptorial dinosaurs did. Right, right. Now, those may not do too much damage, although you are wearing a very thick glove. Uh, to yes. you. The falcons are actually quite gentle. They don't have uh -huh. the same power that hawks do. and uh, But they are still sharp and, and pointy. And right. uh, if they get really excited, they grab a hold of things really tight. and. I don't want that to be my hand, so uh, both right. myself and our falconry uh, students wear a glove to protect ourselves. Right, right, right. We, everybody says uh, Jurassic Park is everywhere, Jurassic World, you know, the Velociraptor, the most deadly animal out there with these big giant claws, so a little bit bigger than these. But these guys are the uh, fastest animals on Earth. Their cousins, the peregrine falcons, can dive at 240 miles an hour, which is pretty insane. These guys are a bit more specialist at chasing things uh, on the flat. They can do about 90 miles an hour under power. Then obviously it's got to be difficult for you to be keeping up with them when you're out there parahawking. I never try to keep up with them. <laughs> I, I, I try to train them that if they wait for me and they come back, they get some food and they get a nice shelter to, uh, to sleep in at night. <laughs> <laughs> and protection from things that might want to eat them. All right, I got a good thing over there with David. I think maybe I'll come on back, and yeah, it's a good life. So. Absolutely. <laughs> no, I think these guys uh, feel just about as lucky in their lives as I do in mine. We all get to come out here to the beautiful oh, coast of La Jolla God, and go this flying. Is gorgeous. Right? This is gorgeous. This is Bunko. Bunko, all right. Bunko is an adult male lanner falcon. Okay, and beautiful marking, just a gorgeous animal. And uh, earlier, before we started the interview, uh, he was turning his head all the way, turned around looking at me, and it was like, wow, you know, not uh, too many. I wonder if he can do that again. Oh, now he's just got, he's going to the beat there a little bit. <laughs> no, he's but, not hungry enough to look to see if I have food in my hand yet, but uh, yes. But it's very unique in their design to be able to do that. Yes, most birds can turn their head at least 180 degrees, and that's due to the fact that they have twice as many neck vertebrae as we do. And the necessity of that comes from the fact that they can't move their eyes in their sockets, so they have to turn their whole head to look around. Right, right. 
I can give you a little peripheral look like here, uh, but they can't do that so they got the ice. And of course, they're always hunting and... Uh, yes. So they got to be... Aware. And protecting themselves. So these little falcons are at risk not only from predators on the ground, but also from the air, uh, hawks and this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. other, mm -hmm. other falcons might attack them. So they're constantly looking around and using that fantastic vision to look for both prey and predator. I would think they're a little bit higher on the food chain, though, as far as uh, success rate. Uh, that their ability to get field mice and what have you or whatever they hunt is uh, better than whatever animal it is that's going to chase them due to the fact that they're so darn fast. And yeah. Yes, I mean they live a very specialized life so most larger falcons are uh, adapted to only catching birds in flight so that kind of limits their food source uh, to begin with mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those birds are also very fast and good at flying so they're pretty good at getting away as well. Oh, so there you go. one well. of the few things that's as good as flying as a falcon is, uh, by many people's estimation, the pigeon, which is a favorite prey of falcons. And oh, that's yeah. probably why, so that they can get away from falcons. Oh, very cool, very cool. It's an adventurous life for these little guys. <laughs>